Hi folks, it's Chris, welcome back. This shall just be a very short video where I show you how I did an animation of the rotation of Jupiter. It was a funny session. I had no plans for this evening, the forecast was all cloudy, but when I choose to go to bed I looked outside and saw Jupiter shining very bright. The Astro app of mine told me that Jupiter was actually in opposition. That means that the Sun, Earth and Jupiter are on one line, so Jupiter is closest to Earth and stands high in the sky at midnight. This is the best moment to capture a planet. The planet will be big, because it's relatively near, the planet will be high in the sky, so not much air to disturb the light path. Of course, I live way too high up in the north, so planets are always low, near the horizon, but never mind. Okay, so I grabbed my scope and pointed it towards Jupiter. My scope is the Skywatcher 750 PDS Explorer, a Newtonian reflector. And I used a planetary webcam, the ZWO-ASI 120MCS color camera. Because planets are tiny in the sky, I needed a 3x Barlow to increase my focal length up to 2.2 meters. Seeing was la la, but here you get a feeling of the basic structure of the cloud bands and the red dot within the live view, and that's not a bad sign. And as you might probably know, planetary imaging is not about taking long exposures, but about rapid sequence of short exposures. I used SharpCap to capture the raw video files. As Jupiter is quite bright, you only need something like 20-30 millisecond exposure time. To increase the frames per second rate, the higher the better, I cropped the image to 800 to 600. We don't need all the black background anyway, so... And then I took 32 video files from half past 11 pm to midnight. To perform a sequence of videos, you click Start Capture within SharpCap and then set the number of frames, 2000 for me, and how many video files you want to grab, let's say 99, and the time interval between each video file. I use 10 seconds, but sometimes wish to set a higher to refocus or reslew between videos, whatever. So, tech. Each video file was 2000 frames long, exposure time 23 milliseconds, gain 41 and 10 seconds between each video file. Please collect as many videos as you can. My observation was limited by the neighbor's house and make sure you check focus from time to time. Reslew if necessary and keep the planet right in the center. Do all that in between the captures, of course. So and that was it. Telescope back in the OPSI and me right into bed. Next morning. First thing then is stack the raw video files with the free software AutoStackert. You simply drag the video files inside the program window and AutoStackert will import the files for you. Click Analyze to let AutoStackert go through all the video subframes to order them by image quality. Then we need to set the AP regions, they are the subparts of the image that AutoStackert will use for quality sorting and stacking. A size of 32 is ok for our file. There shall be something like 20 to 40 IPS over your image. Then click Place AP for AutoStacker to automatically place the APs over your planet. Then we need to set the number of subframes we want to use for stacking. Here I use the 10% and 20% best frames. So AutoStacker will use the 10% and after that the 20% quality best frames and stack them together for the final result. So we'll end up with two final images and we can compare them afterwards. Click Normalize Stack 75% to set the brightness of the result to a normalized level. Sharpen and Blend 50-50 with the original is sometimes a good option, but in this case we don't need the sharpened result anyway, so whatever. Let RGB Align and Save in Folders checked. And we save the final result as a TIFF file for this particular case. So and let Drizzle unchecked and then, yeah, hit go. AutoStacket will then do its stuff. Repeat this process with every video file we captured. Ok, so good so good. We end up with a bunch of stacked images in a folder, both unsharpened and sharpened. Though we will only copy the unsharpened images from this folder because we want to post-process them on our own. Thereby select all and copy them into a separate folder. Here they are. Still a bit blurry, but you can make out the rotation and some rough details. There's still some stuff to do though. So we open up Registax 6, a free piece of software, and load one of these stacked but blurry images into Registax.
So and here we are on the wavelet tab of this program. Registex is very mighty and function rich, but we will only use the wavelet part of this program now. There will be a full tutorial on Registex on this channel anyway. So we are gonna use the tool on the left, the wavelet sharpener. There's quite a complicated bit of math behind the sliders. They are like... I don't know, if you ask me to describe with one sentence what they do, here we go. So first value of each row means denoise or softening and the second value is sharpening or something. The different rows are of increasing scale of application let's say. Fine details on the top, larger areas on the bottom. I mean that's not totally true, I'm oversimplifying here but whatever. We set sharpening to dot 2 and denoise to dot 4 within the first fine detail slider. That is rather aggressive, but our raw material is rather blurry too, so this or nothing. It's a bit of overprocessing, but whatever. Slide it up and down to see the effect. Like magic, isn't it? Dot 2 sharpening for large details, just a bit, and then dot 2 sharpening on the last column. That's it. It's rough and dirty, you could spend hours fiddling with these sliders, and you should, but this will do for this tutorial anyway. So if we are ready here, we click Tools and Show Macro Batch Window here. This will open up a window and we want to apply two things to all of our images. First, all of our images shall get the same wavelet treatment. Second, all of our images shall be saved. Uh, I choose .png this time, I don't know, maybe go for TIFF, whatever. Click Add Files and then enter asterisk dot asterisk to show all the files available. That's a little trick here, otherwise a Registex will only show video files and not our beloved .tiff files. Yeah, and then, then let the beast do its magic. Registex will apply all the wavelets to all of the images and then save them to the filename.png. And it may take a long while. So that were all old stack files. Ready but blurry. And here are our wavelet sharpened Registex files. It's quite a difference, isn't it? Those wavelets are very amazing and ultra mighty. Though due to the bad raw material, the result is a bit overprocessed. Whatever. Yeah, and we want to add some watermarks to the images, don't we? I use iframe view for this. I know it's very ancient, but it works for me. iframe view can open almost any file format and batch process them as you like. In our case, I asked it to add watermarks to all the images. Open iFront view and click File and Batch Convert Rename. Then choose your folder and click Add All. Click Set at Options Batch Converting. And click Insert Text Options. Yeah, and then here you can enter the text. Scale the text box or whatever needed. Place the text box. Uh, we choose right bottom corner. Then we can set the font style and the font size. Set the color of the text and we're nearly ready to go. We just need to set the output folder. Don't set it in the same as the input. Chances are that you overwrite the original data and screw everything up. The name is set to $n to keep the original file name. And click go! This is the result. The watermark is visible on the right bottom of the files. Sweet. Next thing, we want a moving Jupyter move. So we open up GIMP, a free image manipulation software like Photoshop, and import the first image. Sort the images by name and then import the rest of the bunch just by drag and drop. GIMP will add them as new layers and that's what we want. Afterwards I thought it would be pretty to reverse the rotation to create a smooth GIF. So I inverted the sorting by name and dragged them into GIMP once more. Thereby the sorting within the GIMP layers will be inverted too. So we start with file 1 and we end with file 1. Sweet. Final step, we export the image with all layers set active, and that's important, to a GIF file. We will not override my existing GIF, rename it, but the ending must be .gif. Then hit export, a window will pop up, check as animation and set the interval time to 100 millisecond. 
And then hit go. GIMP will add all the active layers to the GIF file in the given order. And this is my final result. You can clearly see the rotation of the clouds, the red dot moving, but you can also see clouds emerge from the side, others disappear and look at that, small band structures actually move faster than the rest of the bands. See that? Don't say that's not cool, because it is. And there you go. I prefer animations of Jupiter over still images because you get a lot more information out of them. Not just the basic structure, but also the movement. And if you're ambitious, you can even reveal the motion of the moons. You can see faint signatures of the moons in this final GIF because I totally missed them in the processing part. Highlight them in every frame to brighten them. It looks very cool. I mean, you can do so many stuff. Show moons moving in front of Jupiter or vanish behind. Show the red dot emerging from the dark. Swirling clouds overtaking each other. It's so cool. And yep. Yeah. That's it. I hope you learned a little bit and can create your own animation now. The suggested software within this tutorial, it's just a suggestion. You can use other tools. The basic processing order will roughly stay the same. The software I use is free and works for me, so I'm fine with that. So now, go out and take amazing animations of planets. I'm looking forward to seeing them. And if you like this little tutorial, then don't forget to hit like and subscribe for more videos to come. And as always I say, clear skies everyone, until next time here on Catching Photons.